I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a very interesting question on conditional probability. Now, many times student had been asking me this question. When is conditional probability formula really helpful? Well, the formula, as you know, is that the probability of event A to happen when B is given is probability of intersection of events A and B divided by probability of event B. Now, in most of the scenarios which we have taken, we find that it is simpler to find probability of event A when B is given uh, in many different ways rather than using a formula. Let me take an example to explain the situation. Uh, let us say we have a restaurant which is very famous for uh, chip and fish or fish and chip as you may say right so fish I think is primary here anyway so we are calling it chip and fish now in this restaurant most of the persons who visit this restaurant they will order for fish for sure now as far as the probability goes we can say that almost 80% people will order for fish. So for fish, I am using F. 80% means 0 0.8. But 20% may not order for fish. So that is with a bar, the complementary of fish, right? So those who do not order for fish will be 20%. Now, one more interesting thing here is that those who order for fish, they would normally order for chips also. And the percent of such people who are ordering for chips is slightly higher, 60%. And not for chips but something else will be then 40%. So we'll call this as C for chips and not chips. So that is kind of a tree chart which will help us solve a question and also answer when is conditional probability formula really helpful? So we are talking about two events which are kind of dependable. So ordering chips is dependent on whether the fish has been ordered or not. If fish has not been ordered, in that case, fewer persons will order for chips. So in that case, we have 40% uh, who will order for chips and 60% will not order for chips, right? So, so that is how we get our tree diagram. Now we are going to answer two questions which are related to conditional probability. Clearly in this tree diagram, we see that chips are dependent on fish order, right? So let us take part A, which is what is the probability of uh, a customer ordering for chips when it is known that fish has been ordered. And the second question which we'll consider will be, what is the probability of a customer ordering for, uh, well, go ahead, reverse this way. Fish, when we know that chips are not being ordered, right? So these are the two questions which we are going to consider to explain when is this formula very, very helpful. Now, in the first case, what is the probability of ordering chips when we know that the fish has been ordered? So we know that fish has been ordered and therefore the probability for chips is very clear. It is 60%. So from the tree diagram, I could straight away write down my answer as 0 0.6. That's it. So as you see in this case, applying this formula is of not so much use, right? Well, we get the same result by applying the formula also. Let us see how. We are saying that probability of chips when F fish is given is probability of intersection of these two, that is chip and fish, divided by probability of fish, right? 
Now intersection of chip and fish and fish and chip is kind of same. So I could write this formula as probability of fish and chip intersection, right? Divide by probability of fish. Now what is this intersection? So probability for fish and chip is 0 0.8 times 0 0.6, right? 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 divided by probability of fish is 0 0.8, right? So clearly, the formula also gives us the same result, which is equal to 0 0.6, right? So it is 0 0.6. So we get the same result, straightforward. But you can see very clearly that probability of ordering for chips when it is given that fish has been ordered is 60%. It's so obvious from the tree diagram that most of the time, we do not feel the need of applying this formula, correct? Now, let's look into the second question. What is the probability that a customer will order for fish when we know that that customer is not taking chips? In this case, direct working is not that easy, right? So in this case, formula become very important. Now here, let's apply the formula and find the result. So now it becomes probability of fish intersection, not chips, divided by probability of not chips, right? Now this intersection, fish and not chip, is what? Fish and not chip is 0.8 times 0 0.4, right? So 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 divided by probability of not chips. So probability of not chips we could find from here. These are the two ways, right? So these are the two ways. So we have to add them up. That is to say 0 0.8 times 0.4 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.6. So that gives you the probability of a customer ordering for fish and knowing fully well that that customer is not taking chips. So we get 0 0.32, let me do this, 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 equals to, that's uh, 0 0.32, divided by within brackets, we'll divide by this. So which is 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 bracket close equals 2. And in, well, you can write 8 over 11, which is also the correct answer. And in decimals, it is around 72%, right? So that is equal to 72%, or you could say 0 0.72 or 8 over 11, as the case may be. But I hope with this example, it is very clear that this formula is really very helpful and in difficult situation, it really helps to use the formula. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this question has been answered. How and when to apply the formula of conditional probability. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.